Well, good day to everyone joining us and welcome to today's X Talks webinar. Today's talk is entitled Medical Device Manufacturing Benefits of Light Curing Technology. My name is Samaya and I'll be your X Talks host for today. At this point, I'd like to thank Dimax who helped develop the content for this presentation. Dimax Corporation is a leading manufacturer of advanced light curable adhesives, coatings, oligomers, light curing equipment, and fluid dispense systems. The corporate headquarters are based in Torrington, Connecticut, with additional facilities in Germany, China, Hong Kong, Korea, Singapore, and Ireland. The company works with OEMs to create complete system solutions that increase manufacturing efficiency and throughput enhance quality, quality, improve safety, and reduce environmental impact. DAMAC serves the needs of the medical, electronics, optical, aerospace, automotive, appliance, metal finishing, and alternative energy industries worldwide. Now, I'd like to have the pleasure of introducing our speakers for today's event. Our first speaker is Michael, Michael Ford. As Global Director of Business Development for the medical market at Dimax, Michael Ford focuses on, cust on customer alignment, strategic planning, and product development to support future market needs. Beyond medical adhesives, Mike has experience in finished medical device components and assembly and has worked with many medical global leaders. Our second speaker is Stacey Chance. As a market research manager at Dimax Corporation, Stacey Chance is responsible for tracking industry trends and customer needs for the medical, automotive, and aerospace markets. Stacey has previous experience in finished medical device assembly, working, working with many of the global medical device leaders. And now, without further ado, I'd like to hand over the mic to our first speaker, Mike. So whenever you're ready, Michael, you can go ahead and get started. Great. Thank you for the introduction, Samaya, and thank you to everyone else for taking time out of your day to learn about the benefits of light curing technology. As Samaya mentioned, my name is Mike Ford, and I am the Global Director of Business Development for Medical here at Dimax. I'm going to take a few minutes to quickly review what light curable materials are and how they work. Light cure adhesives are an incredible, versatile material available in a vast array of properties. In the uncured state, properties like viscosity and rheology will affect how the material behaves during dispensing. After cure properties like tensile strength, modulus, and durometer will determine how the cured material performs in your bond. Defining both the uncured and cured properties starts with the selection of an oligomer. This is the backbone of the formulation, comprising the largest percentage of the material and providing all the base properties. At Dimax, we design and manufacture ligamers in-house. This vertical integration provides our chemists with better control over the capabilities of the ligamer and allows them to adapt the overall material formulation quickly to customer market needs. After the ligamer, monomers, and other additives are selected. These help further define and fine-tune properties such as adhesion levels, viscosity, and material fluorescence. Finally, the photo initiator package is selected. This may be the smallest percentage of the formulation, but it has the most important role. The photo initiator defines energy requirements for cure. This includes both the amount of energy required for full cure and the wavelength range for reactivity. Think of the photo initiator as the gatekeeper. The photochemical reaction of the material will not commence until the photo initiator package is activated. Light cure adhesives bring a range of benefits to device assembly processes. Some of these include flexibility in bonding irregular shapes, easily sealing bond lines, allowing the user unlimited time for part adjustment before rapid cure, and bonding a range of dissimilar substrate materials. These all ensure device designers have the flexibility to select the best substrate combination for their device while still supporting efficient manufacturing processes. Now that we know what a light cure adhesive is comprised of, let's examine the steps the material goes through in the polymerization process. When the uncured adhesive is exposed to proper light wavelength, a polymerization reaction begins and continues until the material solidifies or cures. Think of the process a bit like a dance party. 
In image one, the material is made up of acrylates and photo initiators. At the start of the party, the two groups might be in the same room, but they're not interacting. In image two, light is introduced. Think of the light as the DJ in the open bar, adding some energy to the party. The photo initiator gets excited and begins fragmenting into free radicals. Next thing you know, in image three, those free radicals have grabbed dancing partners, started polymer propagation, a conga line ensues until all the free radicals are attached, resulting in a polymer termination. The, end party, the party ends and the material is considered fully cured when higher intensity or additional exposure time no longer induces a change in the physical properties. While light initiates and drives the polymerization process, the type of light is essential. Each light cure adhesive has a specific photo initiator package which determines the required wavelength or range of wavelengths necessary to initiate the cure process. Generally, light cure materials are activated by wavelengths between the ultraviolet and visible range. Older original chemistries were designed to cure within the range of UVB, UVA, and visible light. Back then, most equipment was powered by broad spectrum mercury bulbs. Today, the LED optimized formulas are designed to react within a narrow targeted band of light. Commonly, the chemistry will react with either 365, 385, or 405 nanometer wavelengths. Until the material is exposed to the required wavelength, it will not begin the cure process. So why is LED curing better than broad spectrum? Older broad spectrum light curing equipment, shown here on the right, is large and bulky, taking up valuable line and production floor space. Furthermore, it uses high energy consuming mercury bulbs and expensive mechanical shutters to control exposure times. These systems require regular maintenance and the bulbs only last an average of 2,000 hours before they must be replaced. Then there, there's the cost of an environmental burden of disposal of the mercury bulb. Newer LED systems eliminate bulbs and shutters completely, dramatically reducing the maintenance time and virtually eliminating the consumable costs. Unlike traditional bulbs, which require time to warm up, LEDs are significantly more energy efficient and provide instant on-off capability for true curing on demand. LED equipment also has a much smaller physical footprint for streamlined and easier integration with automated lines. Perhaps the most significant benefit of LED over broad spectrum systems comes in the increase of life expectancy. The new LED equipment can average over 10,000 service hours. The instant on-off capability means only the actual cure time is counted against the service life. This means a single LED emitter could cure 7.2 million parts, assuming a five second cure cycle. Earlier I explained how the photo initiator determines the cure requirements for the adhesive. Now we will compare the differences in spe uh, spectral distribution for common older broad spectrum systems and the newer LED systems. The black line represents the spectral distribution of older broad spectrum units. You can see it delivers, a, <clears throat> delivers energy across a range of wavelengths. The various peaks indicate relative intensity at that wavelength. Now let's compare that to a 365 nanometer LED curing system, shown here by the green line. You can see there's some overlap of the energy emitted by each system. Next, let's add the 385 nanometer system represented by the purple line. Notice here there is virtually no overlap of energy profiles. This is an important distinction. Because the start of the curing process is set by the photo initiators, both the older broad spectrum and newer 365 nanometer LED systems would struggle to initiate cure in an adhesive optimized to react with 385 nanometer exposure. Finally, we add 405 nanometer system. Like the other LED systems, it provides a single distinct energy peak. The key takeaway here is LED systems provide targeted energy. 
delivering the specific wavelength needed to initiate the cure process in LED-optimized adhesives. On the other hand, broad-spectrum bulbs deliver a range of wavelengths, some of which may not be required for a cure process. Those unnecessary peaks increase the heat output, which can damage thermal-sensitive parts. When you match your curing equipment outputs to the energy requirements of your adhesives, you ensure the best curing performance. Mismatches can lead to partial cures and reduced performance. Now that I've covered some of the basics for light curing adhesives and equipment, I'm going to turn over the presentation to Stacy. Thank you, Mike. I'm Stacy Chance, the Market Intelligence Manager at Dymax. As Mike mentioned, light curable adhesives have been in use for nearly 40 years. In that time, both the chemistry and the equipment has evolved to meet increasingly complex requirements of medical device assembly. Yet our team hears the same three questions on a near daily basis. Today, we will explore how adhesive technology can answer these questions. By far, the most common question we hear is, how can I be certain the adhesive has dispensed properly? Exactly where I want it, and in some cases, nowhere else on my part. This question is almost immediately followed by the second. How can I be sure the adhesive is fully cured? If the adhesive isn't fully cured, your bond strength will fluctuate. Many customers deliberately overexpose their adhesive in the quest to ensure full cure. For the record, overexposing your bond line can weaken bond quality and have an adverse effect on aging. The third question, how can I verify adhesive placement and coverage? is typically driven by the desire to confirm the adhesive process has gone according to specification before moving the part to the next assembly step. An effective process validation will ensure each of these questions is fully resolved. However, there are adhesive technologies which can streamline this work. Traditional adhesives are often pale or even colorless at dispense. The cured state may look nearly identical, making visual verification difficult. Let's look at two different devices to better understand why this is such a common question. We'll start with this fairly typical balloon catheter. When your device is small enough to slide inside human veins, the adhesive needs are measured in micrograms. The amount of adhesive may be minuscule, but failure to apply it properly can cause the bond to burst during pressure tests or even result in a field failure of the device. As you examine this image, Please take a moment and answer our first poll question. Thank you, Stacy. That does bring us to our first poll question. So audience members, you should be seeing that poll on your screens right now. And that question is, can you confirm proper adhesive placement just by looking at this part? So your options are yes or no. Once again, that question is, can you confirm proper adhesive placement just by looking at this part? Your options are yes or no. So it seems like the majority of our audience members have voted. Just for the remaining audience members, you can just click on that option and submit your vote in right now, right? All right, so I'll just close that poll and share the results with you. So it looks like the majority of audience members voted for no with 94% of the votes, while yes went to 6% of the votes. So Stacy, right back to you. Thank you. As you can see, the virtually colorless nature of adhesive makes visual verification difficult at best. Now, let's look at a basic tube connector. In this application, it's essential that we confirm there's sufficient adhesive coverage applied here between the two parts. Failure to apply enough adhesive will result in reduced bond strength. Remember, one benefit to light curable adhesives is unlimited assembly time. The adhesive remains liquid until it is exposed to the appropriate light. So catching an error in the adhesive application before you finish cure allows you to correct the problem and reduce your scrap rates. Unfortunately, inspecting, visually, inspecting parts visually can be challenging. And these two examples illustrate why the most common question we hear is, how do I know the adhesive dispensed properly? To answer this question, our chemists developed a unique technology. 
Dymax patented Secure color change technology dispenses bright blue in color, eliminating any question of adhesive placement. Whether you need micrograms dispensed with precise placement limits, or you have to confirm sufficient coverage over a larger surface, Secure color change technology provides the visual verification of adhesive placement. The blue is easily identified by operators and machines alike. And because this is a color change technology, it also resolves the second most frequently asked question. You can be certain that your adhesive has cured fully with Secure color change technology. The bright blue color you see at dispense will transition to colorless upon full cure. These visual cues transform difficult process verification into something easy. So easy it often requires no additional training, no additional testing equipment, and does not need language translation if you transfer production. This proven technology is being used on medical devices across the globe. Whether your assembly process is manual or highly automated, Secure Color Change Technology supports improvements in process time, energy consumption, and reductions in errors and rework rates. Now we'll examine one device assembly process where the Secure benefits may surprise you. The CDC reports U.S. hospitals perform more than 51 million inpatient surgical procedures annually. 90% of these will require the administration of at least one IV, and IV sets are only one kind of medical tubing application. So tube sets are mass manufactured in tremendous volumes by hundreds of companies every day. Whether your tube set is designed to deliver simple saline or life-saving medication, it will frequently include flexible tubes bonded to a variety of components like stopcocks, connectors, or injection ports. Each component may be a different plastic, and the various parts must bond securely to ensure flawless functionality. Manufacturers are forced to balance critical performance guarantees with cost-effective bonding processes. Historically, this has meant solvent bonding. Solvents as a material are generally less expensive than adhesives. However, a direct comparison of only the bonding material isn't an accurate value assessment. Let's look at the processes a little bit more. The tube set assembly is not a particularly complicated process. For solvent bonding, you apply the solvent to one part, then pause for the solvent to work. Essentially, you're chemically melting the top layer of your part. Next, you put the two pieces together. You may need to hold the bonded parts for a moment so the solvent can work on both pieces. And after the bond is created, you have to wait for the solvent to completely evaporate. This can take up to 24 hours in some cases. The light curing process is similar, just with less pauses. You dispense the adhesive, assemble the parts, and expose the adhesive to the required wavelength. There's no need for additional waiting. The part can be moved immediately to the next assembly. The entire light carrying process can often be completed in seconds. Many companies overlook some of the hidden costs and challenges to solvent bonding. On the manufacturing side, the lengthy evaporation wait times can lead to bottlenecks in the production cycle. Since solvent bonding is prone to stress cracking and crazing, your rework and scrap rate are often measurably higher. The components can be made of different plastics, so you may need more than one solvent material. Finally, solvent bonding isn't suitable for thermoset plastics or dissimilar substrates. On the regulatory side, typical solvents for PVC, ABS, and other plastics common to tubing assemblies generally have a range of dangerous good warnings. Most are highly flammable. They can also be a strong irritant or even an outright corrosive. These dangerous goods ratings can lead to costly special permit requirements, additional hazardous shipping and storage costs, increased employee training needs, and finally, increased disposal costs. As the regulatory burden for solvents increases across the globe, many manufacturers are actively transitioning to alternative solutions. Light curable adhesives offer several benefits. The light curing process provides rapid cure-on-demand, increasing production output levels. 
since the light cure process has significantly less issues with stress cracking or crazing, our customers report anywhere from a 30 to 60% reduction in scrap and rework rates. And finally, light curable adhesives work with dissimilar substrates and even with difficult to bond plastics, giving you the flexibility to select the substrate best suited for your application. Light curable adhesives with C-Cure color add the simple visual cures for easy process verification. While everyone loves production increases, Perhaps the biggest driver for switching to light curable solutions may be the environmental and regulatory benefits. Simply put, light curable adhesives are 100% solvent free. This eliminates the hidden costs of regulatory permits, employee training, special shipping or handling requirements, and expensive disposal costs. At this point, We've explored how C-Cure Color Change Technology addresses the two most common questions about light curing adhesives. So now, let's look at that third question. After your parts are assembled, how do you verify adhesive placement and coverage? Dymax developed ultra-red fluorescent technology to provide a vibrant contrast against the natural blue fluorescing properties of many plastics. This bright red color is triggered by exposure to low intensity 365 nanometer black light. Now you can easily see where the adhesive is on your specific part. The contrast is perfect for both process verification and anti-counterfeiting. So let's take a quick look at how this technology works in an automated line. In this video, a batch of needles is sliding through a vision system inspection. The ultra red technology is activated almost instantly after a flash of low intensity 365 black light. The contrast is easily detected by the vision systems. While most of our customers use this technology for a post cure inspection, it is equally valuable for its inspection before the cure is initiated, especially on expensive device assemblies where rework of the part may not be an option. Now I'd like to share a needle bonding application where a light cure solution with ultra red technology provided a dramatic increase to production output. Light curable adhesives are often the first choice in needle bonding applications. However, in this infusion needle application, the ABS hub is 95% UV blocking and it includes a shadowed area in the needle channel. Adding to the difficulty, the product testing required a 24 hour sodium chloride immersion test prior to the typical pull strengths. The customer's original design file specified a two-part epoxy with a lengthy heat cure process to ensure full cure in that shadowed area. As their production demands increased, the customer initiated a process efficiency review and determined that an LED-optimized adhesive would support significant increases in process speed. Before I continue, I'd like to take another poll. Thank you, Stacy. And that does bring us to our last poll question here. And that question is, have you considered or completed a revalidation related to the adhesive process? So it seems like the majority of audience members have voted. I'll close the poll and you should be seeing the results on your screen. So the majority of votes went to no with 50%, followed by considering with 31%, and then yes at 19%. Stacy, back to you. Thank you for answering our poll question. Now I'm going to share a few factors behind this customer's decision to switch from a two-part epoxy to an LED optimized adhesive. Revalidation is not to be taken lightly. It can be a time consuming and costly process. When a customer is targeting improved efficiency, they often focus on a mix of productivity increases and energy consumption decreases both of which are provided by light cure adhesives. First, factory floor space is a limited resource in many companies. When floor space is maximized, you can't just add another line to increase production levels. Replacing bulky ovens with compact LED curing systems frees up valuable floor space. Second, LED curing provides a dramatic decrease in energy consumption. While the bulk of your energy savings will come directly from eliminating the lengthy heat cure cycle, you can expect smaller savings from reduced climate control requirements. No more ovens means no more additional heat radiating into your clean room. Third, most light curable materials are stable at room temperature. 
eliminating extra costs associated with cold storage and shipping. Fourth, two-part epoxy materials require mixing, and they have pot lifes, which can lead to wasted material. While each of the points here is individually interesting, the scale is often tipped by the process time improvement. Light cure adhesives cure completely in seconds compared to the minutes or even hours for epoxies. This significant improvement in process time can drive exciting production capacity increases. Here, this generic illustr image will help illustrate some of the equipment considerations for this challenging application. Remember, the customer's ABS hub is 95% UV blocking, and it includes a shadowed area within the needle channel. In order to fully cure the material, you must deliver sufficient energy to the adhesive throughout the bond point, including that shadowed area deeper in the adhesive well. The most common emitter orientation is a top-down exposure. This ensures the light has a direct path into the adhesive well. However, your emitter has to allow sufficient clearance for the needle to pass underneath. At the emitter tip, light intensity will be measured at 100%. As the emitter is moved away from the cure surface though, the intensity drops. A half inch distance between the emitter and your cure surface can result in an 80% loss of intensity. Lower intensity levels mean longer exposure times may be required for full cure. Too low of an intensity is also frequently the cause of a tacky cure surface. One method to increase the cure at, increase the intensity at the cure surface is to use two emitters at opposing angles. This spikes up the intensity at the cure surface. However, the angle delivery can increase the issues with shadows within the adhesive well, potentially impeding full cure. Dymax application engineers worked with this customer to select the best LED adhesive and equipment combination. The final solution for this customer involved a new chemistry optimized for UV blocking applications. When paired with a high intensity 405 nanometer emitter, the adhesive reached full cure in four seconds, even in the shadow channel. Final testing of the part demonstrated an improved bond strength over previous processes. And as a bonus, the adhesive selected included ultra-red technology for automated inline inspection. This customer has completed validation and continues to ramp up their production levels. Similar to the solvent bonding comparison earlier, there's an industry perception that epoxy curing is less expensive than light cure. Once again, this is based on a direct comparison only of adhesive costs to epoxy costs, which is an incomplete assessment. When you compare the total process, a different view emerges. Energy consumption, labor, material scrap, and process times all contribute to a higher relative cost with the two-part epoxy process. The material costs are shown in gray at the top of both columns, and they do confirm light cure adhesives can cost more than most epoxies. However, the total process is far more efficient and cost-effective. And this graph doesn't even factor in some of the intangible benefits like handling improvements for your operators who will no longer need to deal with mixing or pot life issues. At this point, we have demonstrated how Dymax Secure Color Changing Technology and ultra-red fluorescing technology answer the three most common adhesive questions. But before we move on to your questions, I'd like to add a bonus technology. Dymax and Compass technology combines the powerful values of Secure and ultra-red into LED-optimized formulations. These adhesives dispense blue, transition to colorless upon full cure, and then fluoresce bright red, bright red for inline inspection. The unique formulations add powerful value to the manufacturing process. Currently, Encompass technology is available in several grades of medical adhesives in a range of viscosities. In the world of complex catheters, Encompass technology provides a distinct manufacturing advantage. 
As the trend for minimally invasive surgery grows, the devices to support them become increasingly complex. A single cardiovascular catheter can include more than 20 bond points, bonding a number of different plastics and metals. With so many different and dissimilar bond points, manufacturers are often forced to design in multiple adhesive solutions. This intricate manufacturing process typically relies on experienced humans for hand assembly and inspection, and each new adhesive used increases the risk that at some point, the operator could grab the wrong adhesive. More than one customer has come to us on a quest to reduce the number of adhesives used on a given device. Light cure materials are often the first choice for bonding catheter tips, marker bands, balloons, or for providing strain relief on thin wires and coating electrode points. But these complex catheters often include parts where the substrates are dark or opaque, and bonding these parts with a light cure solution can be challenging. It's possible to add a secondary cure mechanism like heat or moisture, but this just adds an unwanted extra process step. Instead, designers will frequently turn to cyanoacrylates. Today, I'd like to encourage a shift in perspective. Changing how you look at the problem for your dark substrates can lead to a solution which eliminates yet another adhesive material while also improving your bond strength. This is an overly generalized illustration depicting two parts that may be either dark in color or opaque. While the graphic is showing you two tubes, it could just as easily be a tube to a fitting. With a cyanoacrylate material, the common approach is to cover the end of one end of the part with adhesive, slide the two parts together, and wait. Most of us consider cyanoacrylates instant bond. In fact, some of them are even labeled as instant bond. However, the fixture time can range from five to 90 seconds. Fixture time is not the same as full cure. It is just the necessary time to provide enough bond strength so the parts no longer easily separate. Full cure can take an additional eight to even 24 hours. Waiting on that is yet another one of those frustrating bottlenecks. So I'd like to show you a different option. Edge bonding with a light curable adhesive is faster and can provide stronger bonds. In this method, you would assemble your parts first. Then apply a microbead of the adhesive on the outer edge. Expose the adhesive bead to the required wavelength and it will cure within seconds. Using light curable adhesives means you use less material compared to the cyanoacrylate method. You can also seal the bond line, smooth out the transition between the two parts, and provide a greater bond strength. The newest LED optimized catheter adhesives are designed for strong adhesion to both polyamide based plastics like nylon and PIVA, and also to newer metals like nitinol. This flexibility allows you to use a single adhesive on a wider variety of bond points. These adhesives feature Encompass technology optimized for LED curing at 385 nanometers. The materials will dispense blue giving your operators visual confirmation of adhesive placement, then transition to colorless upon complete cure, typically within seconds. The addition of ultra-red technology allows for easy post-cure inspection to ensure no bond point has been missed before you move this sub-assembly to the next step in your manufacturing process. And since all of the adhesive has now been placed externally, you eliminate any concerns of adhesives potentially entering a fluid path. In this presentation, we explored how light curable materials add efficiency and value to needle bonding, tube sets, and catheter applications. But these are just a few examples of medical devices which benefit from light cure adhesive. Whether your application is micrometer tolerances or requires deep potting, Dymax Light Cure Adhesives and our application engineering team can assist you in selecting the best chemistry and equipment. 
We've also added to this a handout that you can download, including our device or our adhesive selection guide. And now I'd like to go ahead and start questions. Well, thank you very much for that insightful presentation, Stacey and Mike. Now, I would like to invite our audience members to continue sending in their questions or comments using the questions window for the Q&A portion of this webinar. I've already received some questions, uh, so I'll start with those. And the first question is, you mentioned low intensity can cause a tacky cure surface. Is there a way to prevent that or to fix it after the fact? I'll go ahead and answer that question. So preventing a tacky cure surface starts with your adhesive selection. Some of our materials are designed to cure with a harder surface and some are designed to cure a little bit tacky. Once you've selected the right material, you need to ensure that you're using the right intensity and the right wavelength. And then in some cases, you can hit the surface with a second flash of a higher intensity and that might reduce the tackiness. Great, thank you so much, Stacy. And our next question is, how big of a bond gap can you handle with light cure adhesives? I can go ahead and take that one too. So typically we would suggest nothing more than two to six thousandths of a gap. Anything greater than that, and you're really just measuring the strength of the adhesive. However, it also depends on the application. Some of our adhesives can cure up to depths of even a half inch. And in some cases, you can layer the adhesive, but this could affect the total strength. So the geometry of the bond joint and the viscosity of the material kind of combine. It's best to talk to our application engineering team and find the right solution for your application. Great, thank you so much, Stacy, for that answer as well. And our next question is, if there are any, if there are any bond ge geometry or part shape that is not compatible with light curing, yeah, I'll, I'll go ahead and take that one. So traditionally, the answer would be any joint where the adhesion, adhesive excuse me, cannot be fully exposed to the direct light is not compatible with the light cure process. Um, however, we, should, we showed you earlier that some applications with darker substrates or even shadowed areas can utilize uh, light curing solutions. So again, our application engineering team has experience selecting the best adhesive for your application. So we recommend reaching out to them or one of us on, on your specific need. Fantastic, thank you so much, Mike. And our next question is, I think you mentioned there are over 300 medical adhesives. So how do you select the right adhesive? Yeah, I could take that one as well again. Um, so we offer a selector guide that Stacy mentioned that uh, we, I think, are providing with the webinar. And um, that provides details on the various physical properties of the adhesives. Um, however, again, our application engineering team um, also has the process has a process in place that helps gather information on your specific details and then narrows down the adhesive selection that best fits your needs. Fantastic, thank you, Mike. Our next question is: What is the is the cost comparison to solvent bonding technique? This one is again going to. I'll take that question. This one's going to again depend on to an extent the application. Light curing provides so much improved efficiency and so much of a reduction in cost with some of those additional fees associated with solvents that it can be significantly more effect, efficient and cost effective. However, a lot of it depends on the types of solvents that you're using, how many times you need to process the parts or how many joints within the total assembly there can be. So that one's a little bit harder to compare because it's not like needle bonding where there's one hub, one needle. Great, thank you so much, Stacy. Our next question is, are there any light cure adhesives good for gap filling? I can answer that question also. We have some materials that are designed and better for gap curing. Um, it depends on your substrates and what your application is and also the size of the gap. And so that's another question I would again defer to our application engineering team so that you can get some specific answers. Okay, great. Our next question is, what are the best ways to prep, prepare a surface prior to using a light cure adhesive? I can answer that one. So with the surface prep, we recommend that you at least make sure your surface is clean using a, a quick isopropyl wipe or something. But 
In many cases, treatments like plasma can help to not just improve your bond quality, but also ensure that your bond, part, bond variation part to part is reduced. So you have a more consistent and repeatable result. Great, thank you so much, Stacey. Our next question is, how, how long does the ultra-red fluorescent effect remain visible? The ultra-red will remain visible as long as it's exposed to the 365 black light. And so as soon as you take the light away, it begins to fade almost as rapidly as it was activated. Great, thank you so much, Stacey. We're getting a lot of questions here. Our next question is, is there a factor of safety that should be added to or re recommended cure times dependent on the specific adhesive and process? I'm gonna go ahead and take that question. And I'm going to say no. What you need to do is a full cure validation and you need to make sure that you've measured and properly done the validation so that you're achieving full cure on your application. It's not necessarily adhesive specific as it is application specific. Fantastic. Our next question is, can any adhesive be made secure? Yeah, I'll go ahead and take, uh... This is Mike Ford again. Um, so unfortunately, not all of our formulations are compatible with C-Cure change technology. So again, reaching out to either applications engineering or business development, we can uh, help direct you to which ones are possible. Great, thank you so much, Mike. Our next question is, with the, with the C-Cure materials, how much uh, blue color can be left and still indicate full cure? I'll go ahead and answer that question. Uh, no blue color should be left. You can determine full cure by colorless. If there's even shades of blue, you have not fully cured your material. Great, thank you so much, Stacy. Our next question is, with the Encompass materials, can the ultra red effect be used as an indication of cure? And I'll answer that question again. The answer to that is no. The ultra red is typically only visible in C-Cure materials and Encompass technology after you finished cure. When the ultra-red technology is used on its own, you can trigger it at any point, but when it is combined with the C-Cure, the C-Cure properties tend to make it more difficult to see the ultra-red until you've completed cure and transition the material to that colorless well, thank you so much, Stacy. That does bring us to our, our last question that Stacy just answered. So if you do have any more questions, audience members, you can reach out to the DAMAX team. As you can see on your screens right now, you can quickly take a note of their email addresses at, the, at this point. And um, again, thank you so much for your participation, for also answering those poll questions. You will be receiving a follow-up email from Xtalks with access to the recorded archive for this event. Uh, a server window will be popping up on your screens. Your participation is appreciated as it will help us improve our webinars. You can share this webinar on LinkedIn as well. I'll just send that link to you in the chat box. And uh, once again, a big thank you to our speaker, speakers, Michael Ford and Stacey Chance for that very insightful presentation. We hope you found this conference informative. Have a great day, everyone.